Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar. I would like to start this webinar as the last one. And here is a quote from our boss. We want to enable our customers to tell a story in a different way. We want our products to be close to the action and catch every tear and sweat drop. Never miss the unique moment. Uh, so thank you very much for joining the webinar. If you have some questions, please write them down in the Q&A. Um, today we have a guest speaker. It's Casper uh, from Skahoy. Uh, that's a Danish company. And he will tell us uh, some very, very interesting things about their RCP. Thank you very much for joining Casper. Uh, and uh, so today I will give you just a little short introduction about our uh, company and our cameras. Then we talk into detail about the RCP from Skahoy. Then we talk a little bit about the Barracuda and then our production roadmap. So let's start with our company. So Dreamchip, we were founded 10 years ago. Our headquarter is in Garbsen next to Hanover. Then we have another site, which is here in Hamburg. Uh, there I'm with 25 engineers. Then we have another site next in Braunschweig next to Volkswagen. And we have another one in the Netherlands. Altogether, we're 120 people and we're doing a lot of OEM for uh, the film and broadcast industry. And since five years, we're doing now our own cameras and uh, yeah, we are very passionate with our cameras, as you will see. So, as I said, we're doing cameras and IP streaming devices. And today we're going to talk more about the cameras. But I will give you a little intro about the IP streaming devices at the end. So, in total, we have eight different models. Um, as you see here, they all can do HDR in HLG and PQ. That's very important for us because uh, you can do with our cameras, uh, you can work with our cameras in the future as well. They all have HDSDI output and the newest camera we have on the shelf is the Atom One SSM 500 that we're gonna talk today as well. So this is a quote from our customer, please have a look. <clears throat> so um, the Sony HTC 4300 is uh, number one, one camera in every soccer stadium over here in Germany, for example, and uh, they could really match our Atom camera with the Sony HTC and that's uh, because of this multi matrix we built in. So we have our own ISP in the camera and we invented our own multi matrix and that's the reason you can actually match every color into detail uh, with other cameras. So that's very important and it's uh, unique to other small camera manufacturers. We can do this. Uh, you will see later on, Casper will explain it. And uh, that's really we'll focus on and a lot of engineers took very long time to do this. Um, so the workflow with our cameras is actually quite simple. Um, so a lot of you, you know, the Sony RCP, SIMU RCP or Skahoy RCP, and you can actually control them through uh, RS485. You're gonna see later how it's gonna work in detail with Skahoy. And um, we have actually, besides this, our own open software, which you can download from our GUI. And uh, then you can plug the cameras with USB in a laptop and you can control them over there. Or you just run them on auto exposure, auto balance, and uh, you just have to power it from the back and then it will start right away. So the smallest device we have is the Atom One Mini. That's this one. And you have on the back an high, high ROS, that's this one, and the mini HDSDI. On the high ROS, you have power and RS485. So you can actually control, as I said, all this 
cameras, even the small one, uh, in every color detail. And you have a very wide angle, um, so we have 89 degrees and the lens comes with this camera. It has a rolling shutter, but if you run it on 50 frames or 25, it's really not noticing that's a rolling shutter. Um, then we have actually the same camera, but we just unplug the plugs on the back and give them some cables running to the top. So this is uh, a very small camera and uh, you just saw it's only 18 millimeters to the back. It's actually the same camera than before, but a little bit smaller. And then we have the Atom 1 Mini waterproof. So we just had a housing for the Atom 1 Mini and uh, you can use this outdoor, you can use it uh, two meters below in the swimming pool. Yeah, that's the Atom 1 Mini waterproof. And uh, then we have our Atom 1, which has a global shutter, very important, very good in low light. And you have on the back two HDSDI outputs. You have another uh, HDSDI, this is the GenLock, so you can GenLock them to other cameras. And you have a high-res connector, which is power, an RS-485, as on all our cameras. And then you have an AUX port, and on this AUX port, you can actually have then our motor drive. I will show you later on in a picture. And uh, you can control this motor drive through our software or through an RCP like from Skyway. And uh, then we have a 4K Mini 7, which is the smallest device we have. And uh, it has a very small sensor. And that's the reason you can have actually that very, very tiny um, S mount on the S-mount lens on the front. And uh, so the size of the camera, it's that. So comparing to the Atom 1, it's a little bit bigger, but you see it's still a small camera and comparing, oops, so that's the smallest one. So the 4K has the same connectors than the HD. They all have uh, 12G out, so the SDI 2 and uh, SDI 1 have 12G out, and you have the same GenLock uh, on the back, and on the same uh, power uh, and AUX like the Atom 1. Then we have another one, which is the 4K Mini 11, and you on this one you have a two-third, so you can actually have uh, all the existing B4 lenses which are out there, connect them on our Simon camera. We have an adapter from Simon to B4, so you actually can have very big zoom lenses on a tiny camera if you want. And then our uh, best chip in town, the Atom 1 4K uh, Mini 16, has a global shutter and the same two HDSDI outputs. Ah, and very important, on all our 4K, you can have on the one SDI output, you can have uh, 4K, and on the other one, you can have uh, HD. There will be no crop, it's just the same image, but uh, the one will be 4K and the other one will be HD. And the widest angle we have on this one is uh, the Kova, it has a 1.4.7 uh, millimeter. And uh, again, you can control it over RS-485 or over uh, any RCP as you like. Then the lens motors. We invented our own lens motors, as you can see here. They're very strong fitting on the camera. So uh, our cameras are really in tough environment of their Mac to, to a car or, you know, where you really have shaking conditions. So we built this on our own and we try to have uh, it very solid proof that it don't fall off. And we have it for all different kind of lens flavors uh, you uh, can think of. And we have a waterproof housing. So uh, if we had that Olympics coming, we made a waterproof housing for the Mini 7 and uh, it's actually quite small. As you see on the left hand side, I put my hand in there. And uh, yeah, you can have this to 25 meters down below zero. So um, check it out. It's very nice, handy waterproof housing. 
Then we have our Atom One SSM 500. It's our new slow-mo camera. It uh, can shoot 500 frames and it's the first IP camera that we have. So as you see here on the back, it has a network connection. We have five HDSDI outputs. You have an AUX port that you actually can have our motor drives connected to. And we have the gen log, so you can gen log them to other cameras. And uh, a little display on the back. And then the other one is power. Um, we have, as I said, uh, this is a global shutter, very important for high speed. Um, we can run it to 500 frames in 10 bit or in 300 frames in 12 bit. Um, we have two different video outputs. One is the SSM mode and the other one is the trigger mode. Internally, there are four SSDs and you can record 60 seconds in 500 frames. It's a very long time if you play it back this uh, at 25 or 50 frames. Um, you can control it, as I said, at all our cameras, RS485, or you can control it over IP. Um, as I said, it's in HDR, so you can run HLG and PQ. And uh, there are going to be the two workflows, is the, SSM mode, no, the SSM mode, and the other one is the trigger mode. So we were showing at the IBC the SSM mode. So we were at the IBC at the EVS booth and our camera was at the EVS booth and uh, the EVS could control our SSM 500. But you can actually use any other server. There are many companies out there who are working with most of them together now. And the other workflow we're gonna show today is the trigger mode where you can have uh, the internal recording and then playback that out. And uh, over here, that's uh, the two different um, models that we have at the moment, ready to go out. So the one is C mount and the other one is the B4 mount. And uh, there may be an MFT mount in IBC, hopefully gonna be there. So uh, as last week we were showing the sign view control. Um, if you didn't saw this, uh, please check on our webpage. There you can download all the webinars we did in the past. Um, today we're going to show uh, this little remote for our SSM from 500 from Skahoy. And uh, then we have Antelope system. They have their own RCP and you can work with them as well. So the workflow with our cameras, it's actually quite simple. As I said, you, we have our own software, which you can run the camera and you just connect it with USB and you're ready to go. And then the other workflow with the Sony, um, you have that little Vico box, which translate our open source software into the Sony protocol. And then you can run uh, the Sony RCP like you have any other Sony camera you won't see any difference. And then we have the workflow with uh, Skahoy and uh, Kaspar will now tell you everything into detail, how it's gonna work with Skahoy. So Kaspar, if you want, go ahead. Please. Was I too quick? Kasper? Yes, hello, do you hear me guys? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, in the time since um, the webinar started and just now my, uh, my, my video feed dropped out and uh, I can't tell you exactly why that happened. Um, this is really annoying. Um, just give me a second here. 
Yeah, maybe I can start over here. We actually have the RCP uh, over here and that device as well. And uh, uh, as I said, you can just uh, control all the uh, cameras um, over ethernet over here. As you see, you connect our camera to a little transmitter from RS485 over the ethernet, and then you can plug it in over here. And um, on this RCP, it's running on network. Sure. And I'm seeing now Casper's picture running. <laughs> so hey. please go ahead. <laughs> there you are. Thank you. Do you also hear me? Yes. OK. I'm so sorry, guys. You know which fault this was? Blackmagic design. I needed to reboot the switcher. But um, and first I thought it was a camera and then everything else. But now we are online here. Uh, thank you so much for standing in for that moment, Christian, to uh, just talk briefly about the RCP. And uh, thanks for having me on your webinar. I'm very pleased uh, I could join this. And I'm looking so much forward to spending time with you and all the attendees this uh, afternoon. Uh, to give you a quick idea about what we'll talk about, we have the uh, RCP from Skarhoi here, which uh, Christian was uh, just starting to introduce. And then over here, we have the XC8 replay surface um, that will go with the SSM 500. I also do have a few of the other cameras. And I can tell you, this really is an amazingly small camera. And when you realize that there is an even smaller one, the one with the, the wires coming out, you're like in disbelief. It's just incredible that it can get this small. So congratulations on those. Uh, we will Thank also you see- Kasper, you just yeah. have to share your uh, screen. Uh, I don't have any screen to share, so um, I rather oh, suggest your that you stop sharing you. Just share you don't your... see my camera? Yeah, but the picture is very small. Yeah, but this is because I, I need you to stop sharing your screen. I don't know if ah, I can okay, do sorry. that from, from my side. Actually, yeah. Okay. That's how it is now. All right. So I hope every everybody is good with this because you need to see me in. Um, I think if we pin my video, then you'll see this. This should be large now. Otherwise, yes, complain in the chat. Okay. Um, would be great. Thank you. Now, uh, yeah, I was just talking about the Atom um, Mini, one mini camera, and also the Atom camera over here. But before we do that, I would like to, to just briefly introduce those of you who doesn't know about um, Skahoy. I, I want to show you or, or tell you a little bit about who we are. And um, as a tagline across our company, I would say we do universal broadcast controllers. So it's uh, physical hardware pieces, and they can uh, work with many different brands of cameras and video switches and so forth. And that's really um, the, the, the thing that we do mainly. Um, we uh, also focus on how these universal controllers can ease the use of broadcast hardware so that your operators will make less errors. And that applies to both professionals, I think, but also to uh, those contexts where you have a lot of volunteers involved in your production. And, um, one of the key things you'll notice about Skahoy is that we have like 30, 40 different hardware products, like real uh, um, control services uh, in our catalog. And that's a lot of form factor diversity, really. Uh, it's, like, um, the, it's, it's like when you walk into an ice cream shop, you can basically have ice cream, but in a cone or in a cup or in a bowl or on a stick. And it's the same with Skahoy controllers. You, um, you have to think about the content inside the software, the integration with such as stream chip cameras. Uh, that, that's, that content can actually be served from an RCP or a Colorfly, uh, which we'll be looking at. So um, that's the form factor diversity that you see in our range. We have many different form factors. So if we just quickly browse through the products, we do PDC controllers, uh, large ones like the um, PDC Extreme, or we have PDC Pro and PDC Fly, so you see from small to large. We also do vision mixing controllers, again, from small to large. And then we do uh, other types of services like um, RCP control, utility control, audio and replay. And if we focus at utility control, that would be rack units of various types. So it could be um, router control or um, 
Um, well, basically, if you look at our rack units, you'll see variations of um, one row of buttons, two rows of buttons, three rows of buttons, some with encoders and so on. Again, think about it like in the ice cream shop, you want to control something. Now you want to, to wrap it in the right form factor. And that's what is really shining through there. And then we have a, a replay surface, the X, uh, XC8 we'll be looking at today, and also audio control surfaces designed for broadcast contexts. With the Dream Chip camera, the main product category would be RCP control. And of course, our RCP is one of the most iconic products that we have in our range. This is uh, typically used for single camera control, although it is possible in, uh, in many of the integrations we have done to implement also a camera select on it. And because they are all configurable, it's easy to add controls to change cameras, for instance. That's possible on the RCP as well. But in fact, um, the, um, the, the product we call Colorfly is even better designed to control multiple cameras because we put motorized faders on it. And uh, one of the challenges that you generally experience when you have a joystick like uh, the one on the RCP right here is that it, it's really best with a single camera since the joystick uh, is found or it's stuck in that position where you left it. So if you change camera, the joystick won't follow. Now, uh, we have ways to solve that, even with the RCP, where you can have an option like a roller wheel or you can have a motorized fader on the RCP, but a multi-camera surface like the Colorfly is also one of the options you uh, can choose uh, between. These units are very easily configurable. There's a web interface inside that makes it easy to do quick on-site adjustments, but you can also work with our online repository of uh, configuration. So whenever you get one of our units, you, you basically pick which um, um, kind of support you want. Uh, it's all web-based, so you just select uh, Dream Chip, add some one mini or add some one uh, family uh, configuration. Or if it's a different camera, you just pick that one and then you press a button, the, the controller gets updated and now it, it, it supports the camera you selected. So um, in that sense, it's very easy to work with our universal controllers across different brands and integrations you want to do. So, um, if you uh, consider another aspect of these, it is that we integrate control of many different things. So assume that you have a dream chip camera, but you also want to control a uh, video router like a Grass Valley or something that supports the SWP08 protocol. Uh, or is it the other way? I can't remember. Um, let's say that you also had a recording deck to record the um, uh, output from that particular camera and you want to assign a button to start stop recording of that input source You can also do that and then finally you can add a, uh, a PDC head control on the joystick pad on the RCP because you see on the RCP There's this component which is actually like a joystick. It's uh, touch sensitive and as you press it you can uh, Convert that into pan commands or tilt commands. So the, the RCP could in fact be a four-in-one box talking to both a dream chip camera, a pan tilt head, a video router, and also a recording deck. These things are picked like you pick apps in an app store and install on the controller. So that's how we do integrated control with Skahoi uh, units. And we support a lot of brands, you know, from broadcast already. So um, go to our website to check that out. Yes, um, in these times, it's uh, even more important to also consider if you are in a local or in a global setting. So of course our controllers will work on your local area network, but they can also work across a VPN. We ourselves are not doing the VPN connection. We're just pointing to hardware solutions we know will work and then we'll leave it over to network professionals to give you uh, the, the type of bonded and uh, super reliable connection that you need between endpoints. So um, no, regardless of whether you are doing a local production, which uh, these days can be a challenge, as you know, with the recent world events, um, we can support you or we can also support you if you sit a completely different place in the world. So that's basically uh, Skahoy. And um, as I'm now going into details with the XC8, uh, you're very welcome to ask questions in the Q&A. There's a, a Q&A function in, um, 
uh, in, in Zoom here. And uh, if you open that one up, you can ask questions. And uh, if I notice, then I'll answer. But I like to keep it interactive to the, so to the degree that, that you wish to, uh, to interact with us, uh, we are very open to, uh, to doing it uh, that way, basically. But otherwise, I'll simply start out uh, with looking at the XC8 um, working with the SSM 500, because I think that's a, a very exciting uh, combination. Um, and uh, I'm also a little bit thirsty, so I, I really want to start out with that one. And you'll know in a moment why I'm thinking like that. I don't see any questions, so uh, I'll just get uh, right to it. Now, um, first, I will just change over to my top camera here. So uh, there you go. Um, the SSM 500 is here, and the XC8 is here, and the RCP. We'll just put this aside a little bit for now. So one technical note here is that uh, since um, the SSM 500 uses a serial connection, RS485, then, uh, and our controllers are purely Ethernet, then we use this little box, which is a commercially available Ethernet to serial conversion box. Simply, our controllers are connected to this one using TCP, and then we are sending the serial commands uh, over Ethernet out on these wires that then go up to the camera. So this little box in between is only doing that. Let's just get that out of the picture because it is as such not important. And then we'll zoom in on this one. So I'll see if I can hit my zoom button here on my top camera. Oh, it's difficult. Okay, here we go. So now hopefully you can see clearly what is in the displays of my controller. Well, in fact, it is currently playing back a clip, but uh, I'm going to stop that. And now I'm going to show you what this uh, model does. Christian told us that we have um, 60 seconds of 500 frames available in this unit. And if I do my math on that, it means 30,000 frames. It also has four buffers you can store um, slow motion shots in. And uh, on the XC8, the first thing you uh, might want to do is to, um, to go here to configure your buffers. In this display you're seeing right now, uh, you can see that I have actually four buffers in use already. Uh, but I can change that. If I press this button, I will reconfigure the camera to give me one single buffer with uh, 30,000 frames in, or I can have three, for instance. In that case, I just get 10,000, or I can go back and have four buffers available, in which case I get 7,500 frames for each of the buffers. This number tells me that I already did record some stuff in the camera. And um, we'll just leave it as it is, and then we'll go um, back here. And here we can see that a number of these buffers are already used. Then we see something uh, related to uh, playback and so forth. But uh, let's just watch the uh, live output of the camera. And I have it right here. You see, my fingers is in the picture. And um, over here, we have a color chart. We have a, a glass. And we have a Coke Zero, which I would like to open now. And then we are going to have some fun. We are going to pour this uh, Coke into the glass so we see some slow motion action. And I think um, that will give us some beautiful pictures. So to do that, we will need to start recording to one of the buffers on the camera. And we can do that by pressing uh, this button up here, which is uh, a record start button for the free buffer B4. OK? So are you ready? Uh, let me see. We want to um, see if we can bring up. This is the picture of the, the camera. Yes. Okay. So I am going to press this one. Now it's recording. I'm bringing up my Coke here and like that. Okay. And then I press stop, record stop right there. Okay. N any questions? No, great. I have, I've been drinking a lot of Coke today because I've been practicing. So if I'm like all, you know, either I need to pee or I'm just super hyped on coughing. So um, 
pick, pick whatever, or maybe it's a combination. But anyway, now we just recorded these into buffer number four and we wanna see how this replays. We have various components on the XA to do that. We have the, uh, the T-bar here to set the replay speed. We also have a jog shell wheel, but let's press this button. But um, before we do so, let's just get it configured so that you can see the replay, okay? Um, it's actually playing back at the moment. We can see that in this little display, which is showing me that uh, frames are being replayed and uh, you can see that. Now, uh, one of the things that we obviously wanna do here is, yeah, there you see my hand. Now, I am getting impatient, okay? So I press this, the pause button here and then I use the jog shuttle wheel to go forth and back in my clip. You can see the shuttle function here. I can, I can now fast forward and go backwards again in my clip. So, Let's just get it there. I use now the jog function here to skip frames like that. And then what I'm gonna do right now is to um, make an endpoint. I press this button to set an endpoint for what I did because uh, this, this point. And then I'm gonna just play back once again by pressing this button and let's see how it works out. So these beautiful, beautiful pictures are thanks to Dream, Dream Chips SSM 500 camera played back in, um, I guess, 50 frames per second, but Christian can confirm that. I'm not ex exactly sure. Um, back at the surface here, uh, as it is playing back, I can also use the T-bar to control the playback speed. So if I increase it now, I'm kind of back to actually regular uh, playback speed. Uh, the clip is gonna play over and over again because I'm in loop mode here. So. Um, it's just doing this on and on and on, but I can reduce the playback speed a little bit here to um, slower. I can also uh, pause the whole thing. I can stop. And if I do that, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, camera, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm back to my live image from the camera. And um, yes. Okay, so uh, what you have seen is that I recorded a clip to buffer number four. I have played it back, I've paused it, I've been able to stop it. I can control the playback speed using this lever. I can uh, fast forward and backward using the, the shuttle wheel and uh, the jog wheel can be used to do frame accurate um, uh, seeking in the material. In the displays, you see uh, various modes we can enable in the camera, like stop mode is whether the camera will go back to live, which is what you just saw because, um, let me see if we can get the camera up here. Uh, sorry, this one. If I press the stop key here, then we are back to the live signal. But if I press this one, then instead I get a black or I get color bars. Uh, so those are options found in the Dream Chip camera I'm choosing between. Playback mode will give me two options here. Either I'm looping or I'm having a once playback like this. If I wanna reset the buffers so that I can do new recordings, then all you need to do is to press the other keys over here. So basically if I press uh, key number uh, eight, then I'm gonna clear that buffer and there's nothing left in buffer four at this point. I need to, to do it over again if I, if I wanna replay this. But let's look at what is in the other buffers because previously today I did some recordings there. So um, we can simply choose these buffers by pressing for instance one like that. And then um, as I'm now uh, doing this, um, uh, pressing uh, the play button, then I'm playing back. Again, notice how um, I'm playing back from the exact endpoint I have marked earlier because almost all the time the endpoint the, the starting point of your recording won't correspond with the actual starting point you uh, desire for your playback. Um, then I could pause this one and I, uh, wait, I need to stop and I can select another clip here. So here is another one uh, I did earlier. So there you are seeing how I'm replaying content from the buffers uh, pre-recorded earlier today by, um, using these buttons up here to uh, select the clip I want to play back. And in this case, another one here. Looks like you had a lot of fun today. Yeah, I did. <laughs> we have I actually did. our first question. That sounds great. So uh, while this is uh, playing back in the background, you will see this is just, um, if I put it in loop mode, we can have this playing back in the, in, in the corner of the screen. So what's the question? So, so yeah, yeah, Patrick is asking, following setup two, so two Atom One cameras, for instance, uh, football in goals, 
connected on two Ethernet IS485 modules to on-site stage box network switch, stage box to Riedel Micron, uh, Ethernet tunnel to OB van Micron, then to Skahoy RCP for both Atom cameras. Is that possible? Um, and which Ethernet IS485 modules do you prefer? Now, um, I think it sounds like this would work. I'm taking here that the mic, the, the Riedel units um, only mentioned as responsible for bringing the network connection from your uh, uh, on-site stage box out to your OB van. And uh, if that's creating a regular you know, network connection, then there should be no problem. With these boxes, since it's TCP, you will generally have no problems working on two different subnets, that is possible. So uh, uh, you would have one box for each camera at your on-site um, location. And uh, then over the network, you would have signals from the XC8 or the RCP going. The uh, Ethernet RS485 converter we are using is really a cheap one. It's um, from a company called USR IoT, uh, something we can send you the model number. Uh, so we have one that we prefer because it has a, a, a number of features that we think are significant, like you can have multiple client connections to it, which is gonna increase the uh, resilience in case that you have a network drop out and stuff like, stuff like that. So they are, um, they are very inexpensive and uh, easy to use. We have uh, used a number of others that turns out to work well. This is our preferred one because it's just working fine and it's inexpensive. We also found some that has a PoE. So if you want a, um, a network powered unit, that's possible as well. Um, if you write to support at skahoy.com, then we can help you out with the various options that we believe are best suited for this. So I consider that one answered. How many Atom cameras can we control with Skahoy device? And uh, Lucas, why don't you uh, chip in here? Uh, would Yeah, thank you. Uh, so by the way, quickly, Lucas is, um, um, my Skahoy developer who has been most involved with the DreamChip implementation. So he knows a lot of stuff and he's with us today. So let's hear what Lucas has to say. Um, hello, everybody. Um, let's see. Um, I'm, I don't have a camera today. Sorry for that. Uh, so how many cameras can we control? So um, um, this is uh, the theoretical limits. And keep in mind that what I'm telling you has not been fully tested by us with the whole uh, numbers. But um, the one Skahoy controller is able to control up to eight devices on the local network or on the network. So that means you can have up to eight um, of the serial converters hooked up to one uh, Skahoy controller. Um, but uh, as you may know that the um, DreamChip cameras can support uh, the, that multiple cameras are connected to one serial bus. We also support that and we support both options um, all at once. So um, in theory, I think currently you can control up to 10 uh, cameras per serial converter um, and we can control up to eight serial converters. But uh, this is the theoretical maximum and um, we cannot, we didn't test it with this large number yet. Um, but uh, we, will fair, we are fairly sure that it will work um, with uh, at least half of them easily. So that's, that's what we've been uh, implementing. Thank you very much, Lucas. Is the picture back at me? So while, while you um, had fun uh, with your explanation, I had fun with my Coke. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to do this again. Is that OK with you? So uh, let's just get started here. I will uh, share with you what I'm doing on the um, XC8. I'm selecting buffer number four. I'm already recording, so I need to pour some Coke into this glass quite quickly. There we go. And I press record stop right here. So uh, we can now have a replay of this. See if I can fast forward to, whoop, there we go. And let's see. How's this looking to you, Christian? Yeah, looks nice. Actually, um, 
if you talk about our SSM 500, right now you're shooting probably with 500 frames and you have a shutter one, yes. uh, one thousandth or one to 500. And maybe you notice that this camera uh, don't require much light. So um, actually if you shoot outside and you have sunshine, you need to have an ND filter on. Um, please uh, check out uh, the camera or get back to us and test that at your field because uh, it's actually quite bright, the sensor. And uh, the camera you see uh, next to Casper is actually uh, the developer camera. So the final model is looking a little bit different. Very good. Um, thank you. I'll just um, wait, bring the video back to me. Now, um, <clears throat> some of the things that uh, you can ask all kinds of questions about the SSM 500 integration, but I'm going to share with you just quickly how the configuration looks. So you have an idea about how um, actions that you find on the uh, XC8 can be uh, remapped if you want, how you could also easily choose them for a different product if for whatever reason you wanted to integrate replay on the RCP, for instance. That would be possible as well to trigger all these things on the RCP. You won't have the jock shuttle wheel. You will have some kind of fader uh, in, with uh, respect to what the RCP joystick can do. And um, let me share my screen so you can see how such an interface looks. So. Uh, what you see in this web browser is really the interface of the RCP, but I also have it for the XC8 right here. So for instance, if you uh, look at the jock shuttle wheel, you basically select which component you want to uh, see the action for. And let's uh, choose the outer ring, which is shuttle. And uh, when I choose that one, you can see that it's simply an action uh, that can be assigned to this ring, which is called seek. And uh, with that action, you can decide how fine or how coarse should your steps be. If we do the same for the inner um, component here, it is uh, the same, but in that case, it's assigned to a so-called com uh, sorry, encoder component so uh, that it's sending pulses forth and back. And that's the same thing. Uh, you only see one action. This is, no, wait, you actually see a lot of actions here, but. That depends on the type of component. So now what we are looking at here is really the machine room of all the DreamChip Atom 1 integrations we have done, which is all the actions where you can see many of the top actions seems to belong on an RCP. We did not apply them to the XC8, but we could have done so if we wanted RCP related functions with the camera on these buttons. Uh, mainly what we did for the XC8 was to map all the replay related um, commands out on the XC8. So the next thing we'll be looking at is the uh, RCP, which is next to me here. So, um, and uh, it looks in the configuration like this. So now you get this idea. I think I'll just stop my screen sharing so we can get back to looking at the, um, the actual controllers. So I'll just put the XC8 aside and then bring up the, uh, the RCP here in, in the view. Um, okay. I think you all see this, uh, this one. Now, um, the other camera that we have today is the Atom 1 right here. And it is uh, positioned so that you can see the Coke and the glass and also the color chart uh, associated with it uh, right here. And then if I um, bring up the RCP, then we can see it all at once right here. That's great. Now, um, the RCP joystick, of course, um, is map to something that looks like the iris, but is it the iris, Christian? As you don't have the motors, it's not the iris. It's uh, uh, over there, the brightness. So um, you control now, not the iris, but you have the possibilities to use our motor drivers together with a Skahoi device. It's working. It's actually next to me. And then you can control the iris. Exactly. So uh, in, in the absence of actual iris on this particular camera, it's mapped to the brightness. You could also choose to just disable it. Again, remember what we just did. We had a web interface where, as, you know, uh, clicking on the joystick component, you can uh, deselect any action so that it does nothing, or you can reassign it to uh, working with the motor drive 
that uh, Christian just mentioned, if you have a different lens on the camera. So that's the power of the configuration down to the individual actions on the individual buttons on our controllers. Now, keep in mind, I did not do any time-consuming custom work to have the RCP work with the Atom Mini camera today. I simply went to our website, picked Atom One configuration, set the right IP address for the conversion to serial, and it worked. So much of the general work is already done for you with configurations either made by Skahoy or you have made yourself. But you can always choose to go in detail and, and do more fine work yourself. So if we look at the features associated with um, the Atom One uh, camera, for instance, the RCP is generally built around the uh, iris joystick here. You have also a centering, and if you are turning this one, you can see you're adjusting the master black here. Uh, quite often, we also allow you to adjust it using an uh, encoder just uh, next to. So that's another option. It gives you kind of more granular control, I feel, in this case. Uh, we have a button here that will allow you to enable and disable the LUTs in the camera, and uh, that has obviously a significant um, impact on the picture. Then uh, we have uh, auto white uh, balance over here, which is uh, something you can turn on and off. Uh, if you turn it off, then you can press the trigger button here and it will um, trigger an uh, auto white balance uh, function. But the main thing in terms of all the amazing parameters you can control in the DreamShip cameras, you uh, will be orienting yourself towards the eight encoder buttons on the top of the RCP. And if you look at those, you see how nicely they are color coded. So you immediately understand that we are dealing with red, green, and blue, and some kind of um, unspecified command over here on the white ring. And then the displays up here show you the same um, uh, two rows of four tiles, which is associated with each row of buttons. And we see in the display, Hopefully this is clear enough for you, but maybe I'm able to zoom a little bit further in. Okay, that seemed to be the case, okay? So what you see in the display is that we have black, red, green, uh, and blue. We have gain, red, green, and blue. I think the gain, if, if for instance, I um, turn on the auto white balance down here, you see that the gain is blocked out. It has now a little forbidden icon. It means that the values we see here cannot be changed because they are now managed by the automatic white balance. But if I deselect it, I am back uh, at where we were before and I'm able to adjust these values. So uh, let's see if we can um, mistreat the picture a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm, not, a, um, I'm not a shader uh, myself by profession or anything. So I am uh, probably unable to do anything really useful to this. But the main thing that you need to observe is how these values are able to affect the picture, of course. And, if I do the same for the uh, the blacks, you should see uh, changes to the black of the little picture. In picture, you see there. Uh, if I'm pressing the um, the trigger button here, you will see that it's picking up values for the gain up here when I, I uh, basically read out those values. Now, uh, the way we structured this, and again, uh, when I say structure, I mean this is built as a configuration coming out of the box for the, for the uh, unit. Uh, we built a little menu, and it has uh, three pages. The pages are found on these knobs right here. So uh, we are currently on the color page. Then I can go to something called functions. And if we look at what is in functions, you have um, black uh, master, red, green, and blue. We have something called SDI white. We have flare, red, green, and blue, and SDI black over here. So obviously these values can be adjusted uh, using the knobs. Again, okay, let's see if uh, we can do something that affects the image radically. Yes, we could. So you can see how that works. Filters, uh, detail. So that will create some sharpness for you. You have knee point and slope over here. We have a uh, hue. Again, one great way to uh, mistreat the picture significantly. If you press and hold, you can quite often reset these parameters as happened just now. So it's back to zero, saturation, contrast, and uh, something called e-time. I'm actually not sure about that one, but maybe if you're interested, Christian or Lucas can answer. So as you can see, the, the Skahoy RCP has access to all the parameters that you would like to adjust in the DreamShip cameras on the knobs using the display to show you the values and break it out into tactile control points because you need to keep your eyes on the screen when you are working with your images. And that's what Skahoy controllers are generally about, giving you tactile control of your visual content. 
So um, I think I, I want to go back and look at what questions we have. And if there's some interaction we can achieve here, uh, I'll be uh, happy to, uh, to do that. We see uh, Luca has a question. Good evening. I would like to use an Atom 1 4K Mini 11 camera with a before lens. Can I use the RCP to move the iris and give the focus and zoom control to the camera operator? And uh, Christian, I don't know if you can answer this question because you know the uh, Atom 1 4K Mini 11 camera much better than I do and what accessories you would usually connect to it. So um, we have this adapter from C mount to B4 mount. So you can uh, have our cameras connected to the big uh, B4 mounts. And uh, then the connection from the B4 lens you can actually uh, have an adapter that's from another company. And then you can use uh, this into the iris that you can control on the um, Skahoy RCP, the iris. And then your camera uh, can, can, can have the uh, zoom and focus from another device. Um, Luca, please uh, send me an email about this or I will send you an email and uh, I will tell you the device. Very good. Um, we have also historically had uh, devices for B4 lens control, so you can control the iris on these lenses. Uh, back in the days we did it when Blackmagic Design put out cameras with no high rose connector for your B4 lenses. Uh, nowadays, uh, we have increasing requests just like yours about how a uh, POV camera like those from DreamChip can be combined with before lenses. So um, uh, we also, uh, actually we don't, we, we, we couldn't send it to you today, but we are working on reintroducing, reintroducing this product in our portfolio uh, in the short term. So we may soon have something, but send uh, Christian an email and uh, he can uh, put us in touch uh, if, if you want to discuss these uh, things. So we don't see any more questions in the Q&A at uh, this point. Uh, I am curious about one thing and I need Lucas to uh, answer it um, because we talked about earlier that when you work with the SSM 500, there are two different um, concerns with respect to uh, shading the image. There's both the uh, live image and then there's the uh, recorded image uh, and uh, uh, the, the way it comes out of the, the camera upon playback. Uh, Lucas, would you like to uh, to explain uh, how that works and and what is involved in uh, yes. in that distinction? Of so, um, with uh, the SSM five hundred, um, you uh, have the option of uh, individually uh, adjusting the parameters of the the life chain of the camera and the playback chain. So it's important to note that. Um, we actually do support that, but it's currently not mapped onto our controller. So that is an option that you can select from uh, the Unisketch configuration page um, if you need that. So usually what you can do with all um, those uh, in-camera processing things uh, like the brightness and things like that, you can shade them for the, the live operation and for the playback operation individually. You usually would uh, do that in the workflow. Yeah, we can see select alt chain which is the action that allows you to switch between setting up the life and the playback chain. And what you would normally do is you would first select the life chain and do your setup there. Uh, and after you have uh, set up the life chain as you like, you would copy over the settings from the life chain to the playback chain. So Casper, um, if you can go back to the Unisketch interface one more time. Just a uh, second. We have uh, under settings, um, there's also a new option. Uh, so if you're familiar with, uh, with how this uh, worked before, if you go up to settings, um, as you know, you can uh, save settings and load settings that um, they will uh, also load up when you power cycle the camera. Um, and now you have a new <coughs> option for the SSM 500, which basically copies over the settings from the live to the playback chain. Um, and this is also equivalent to the functions that you can do um, on the uh, user interface uh, that DreamChip is uh, providing, the, the Atom 1 um, GUI. Uh, and uh, you can uh, use this function from a Skyhoy RCP. Right now, it's not uh, mapped in the, um, in the preset that we have 
for the controller as it's a specific function that is only for one camera. Um, but uh, it's very easy to um, add it to the panel and to add this function. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have so much more to add really. Um, I uh, have went through the RCP and the XC8 and uh, I hope this has answered whatever questions you might have out there. And thank you, Lucas, for explaining the deeper features of working with the settings and copying those parameters around. Christian, do you have any uh, final remarks at this point? Um, final remarks. So, um, you know, we're working together with the Skaha now for a long time and I just can say it's a product it's very reliable and it's working perfectly and maybe if you can talk five more minutes because next door the church is still going on <laughs> <laughs> you had that problem last week as well oh yeah <laughs> so every time at six it's gonna hilarious loud um no I think you said it all um yeah, just as I said, the SSM 500, that's uh, another model you have there is just the first model we showed at the IBC. And uh, yeah, maybe I will uh, follow up the PowerPoint presentation. Hold on a second. I just have to get... screen ready so uh, as you see here that's uh, another workflow using uh, the sign view system and we're going to have a webinar with polcam uh, in two weeks uh, please join us for this um, then uh, i would love to give you a rough introduction about the product application so um, we are having a lot of our cameras actually in reality tv so endemol is a big uh, company we're working together and uh, they use our cameras in spots where usually don't fit a big broadcast camera. Then we actually, in sports, a uh, lot of soccer, we're doing um, Formula One and in this racing cars we're built in. We're doing all kinds of sport events everywhere where uh, you don't fit a big broadcast camera, there we are. And on the left side, you see uh, the pole cam system. So. Um, we're working very close with Polcam together and they use our lighter camera as well. So in Cricket, um, they now build it, uh, our Atom 1 Mini Air in the stump uh, over here. And uh, they have our cameras in tunnel, in the grass, um, at golf courses or in the cricket field. Then on hockey, um, we are everywhere behind the goal or next to the coach, so or in, even in the helmet. Um, and in esports, um, very important, they use our Atom 1 uh, because it's very good in low light and the players don't want to get it during the game, they don't do, get it struck because of the big sunlight so or bright shining lights. So they use our Atom 1 uh, that they can reduce the light during the game. And uh, on remote production, uh, our cameras get used. Then in cinema, for sure, um, that was a 3D shot with two 4K Mini 16 cameras. Um, then on concerts, um, because we don't have any buffer in our camera, our camera goes straight live out. A lot of cameras actually have a buffer and you don't have that in real sync. So our cameras don't have any delay. Uh, you can straightforward work with these cameras and see the picture. Then on House of Worship, uh, that's coming more and more actually uh, during Corona, there was really a hype. And uh, I would love to show you the Barracuda. So um, if you look at my video, so the Barracuda is uh, not as huge. So it fits in my hand. Um, 
the Barracuda is a streaming device. So you can have actually five of our um, cameras connected on this HIROS. So this HIROS is the same we have on the cameras. And you can have RS485 on it and power. And uh, down below you can connect it with HDSDI. So you can have five HD cameras connected to the Barracuda and then stream it over ethernet or you have the possibilities to have a LTL SIM card in the back and then you can uh, stream it over LTE. At the same time, you have the possibilities to put a SD card in there and record it on the SD card. Or if it's uh, very long, you can plug a SSD by USB 3 and then you can record as much as you can on this uh, SSD drive. Um, as you see over here, we support GPS as well. So if your Barracuda is, uh, for example, in a car, you uh, know where this car is driving around the world. Um, these are the specs. So as I said, we can one time 4K P60 up to P60. So we can do P50, P, all the fragments uh, in there. And very important, we can do this with interlaced as well. So we can do P and I. And uh, yeah, so basically I think I uh, explained everything. Um, we have um, a webinar dedicated for this. You find uh, on our webpage um, and my colleague uh, Stefan was explaining everything into a half an hour about the Barracuda. So if you're interested, just click on our webpage atom-one.de and there you find the webinar. And this was a workflow uh, with the church next door. Uh, we had five cameras there and we were streaming um, three times, uh, one time over Facebook and one, two times over YouTube. So that was the workflow using our uh, Barracuda encoder and decoder. And uh, then our production roadmap. So we're going to have a webinar um, next week with uh, BR Remote. And they um, built a very nice small remote head. And uh, as you see over here on the left side, that's our Atom 1 Mini waterproof. So this remote head is waterproof as well. And on the right hand side, you see our Atom 1 Mini. Um, this head can actually have lifted bigger cameras. So on the left, it's the Atom 1 with our model drives and that's the 4K. So um, we're gonna explain everything in detail next week um, with BR Remote together. So they will join us like Casper uh, joined. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward for this uh, webinar because there are already a huge interest in this BR remote and I can tell you it's a very nice fantastic tool which works perfectly. And this is the remote for the BR remote head. Then we're going to show at IBC <laughs> or in a webinar during IBC uh, we're going to show Atom 1 Mini Zoom. So we were searching very long for a nice zoom lens and uh, now we found one. It took us so long because if you're using a zoom, you're getting a lot of bad uh, chromatization and the image getting blurry, etc, etc. So now we found one zoom lens where we really can say that is the quality we uh, can compare to the big broadcast lenses. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's going to be around September where we finalize this product. And again, it's a very tiny one. And please, 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 if you uh, want to find out more how to set up uh, the Sony Skahoy or Sineview RCP, go to our Vimeo page and uh, or the motor drive or how to general run these cameras, go to the Vimeo page and check it out. Um, then we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And please come to us, talk to us, and test our cameras, and then send me a picture where you used our cameras um, that I can post this on Instagram. Uh, please go on Instagram. There you see all kind of different pictures where actually people put our cameras. And um, yeah, as I said, um, on our webpage, 
uh, you find a lot of resellers around the world. Contact them. They all have our Atom cameras. They all have our Barracuda devices. Please go there. Tell them I want to test them and uh, please send me a picture <laughs> and uh, tell me the results and please test it to any other cameras uh, and uh, yeah, take the Skahoy RCP and play around with our cameras. Oops, sorry. And uh, yeah, there's some reference. We were working with this company or we're still working with these companies together. And um, so as I said, we have one uh, next week, that's going to be uh, with VR Remote, one webinar, and the other webinar going to be with Polcam, where we have the Atom 1 SSM 500 on the Polcam, and uh, we're going to show this in two weeks. So, uh, my colleague Stefana and I, uh, if you don't have any questions to me or to Casper, I would say thank you very much, Casper, for joining the webinar. That was very nice to see and it was really cool that you had some <laughs> nice shots with our SSM 500. Um, thank you very much for all for listening. And uh, if you want uh, to watch the other webinars we did in the past, please go to our webpage and there you find uh, all the webinars from the past. And please join us next week for our next webinar with BI Remote. Be safe and uh, yeah, have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Take care all.